In this project, we're going to make a simple racing game. Right now, I have two sprites on the stage, the cat and the dog one sprite. I have a small script for the dog one sprite, basically the same as I've had for other projects, where when the program starts with a green flag, we keep moving forever 10 steps. So if I run that, as expected, the dog runs off the screen. We would like the dog to stop on a finish line. So maybe first we need to draw a finish line on the background of the stage. So I'm going to click on the stage and go to its backdrops and we're going to edit this backdrop in the paint program here. I'm just going to add a line that's a nice bright red color down the edge of the stage. If I hold down shift and click, it makes a straight line down the stage so you don't have to try to keep it exactly vertical. So that was pretty easy. Now we have a finish line here. Let's go back to the dog. It's showing us its costume. We don't want to mess with that. We'd like the dog to stop when it hits the red line. So there's different ways we could do that. One is we could use that wait until block on a separate chunk of code from here. But I'm going to modify this code so that it only moves forward until we touch the red line. Let's look at some of the things that are available to us under control. Similar to the wait until block, there is a repeat until. So you can imagine repeating the move until we touch the red line. So let me move that move block down into this repeat. And I'm going to break that free and just drop it off here to delete it. Now I'm going to attach this to the green flag. So this chunk of code will repeat moving 10 steps until something is true. I'm going to do this with a touching color block. Notice again it fits in that area there. We want to be touching color red. I can click on the little color square and then when I touch the red, it picks up that color for me. I think I missed there. Touching color. All right, I'm not getting a good, oh, there I go. All right, hopefully you have an easier time than I did. Let's see how this works. I hit the green flag, dog races forward and stops when it touches the red line. So we could, at this point, after this part of code, report something about winning the race. Um, and we'll get to that soon. One thing that we've been having to do for a lot of projects that's sort of annoying is that we have to keep repositioning the sprites to where they belong at the beginning of the project. So in this case, if we were racing, we would have to keep moving the cat back to the beginning and the dog back to, to the beginning. It's often very nice in a project to make sure you position the sprites correctly when the green flag is clicked. So here, I can use this go to command. We haven't really talked about what these numbers mean. Notice down here, it reports what's called an X and a Y position. And over here, there's also an X and a Y position. X tells you how far left and right you are on the stage. Y tells you how far up and down you are on the stage x equals 0 and y equals 0 is, is basically right here in the center of the stage. Notice when I move my mouse, the x and y here changes with my mouse motion. So near the center of the stage, those numbers are pretty small. As I go left, the x becomes negative. And I go, as I go right, the x becomes positive. As I go up, the y becomes positive, And as I go down, the y becomes negative. So I can tell the sprite to go to a particular location on the stage by using this go to command and typing in the numbers I want. The numbers up here tell me where it is right now. And we probably want to start off somewhere on this left side like this. So I'm going to copy these numbers, x equals negative 197 and y equals negative 189, and put them into my go to command. Negative 200 is close to negative 197, and this one here is close to that. So if I click on this, 
it shows me exactly where it's going to position. Let's add this to the little program we have. So every time the green flag is clicked, no matter where the dog was before, the first thing it does is try to tries to position it exactly where it belongs here at the starting line. Once it's positioned, it repeats uh, moving forward until it touches the color red. So let's click on the green flag and see what happens here. Okay, so that's, that's what I expect. Now I want to add some commands for the human player. The human's going to control the cat. So I'm going to click on the cat and start writing a program for that. We want to move the cat by banging on the keyboard, basically. And there's different ways you can do this. You could imagine uh, using an event, like when spacebar is pressed, move 10 steps, and that works pretty well. One disadvantage is the person can hold the spacebar down, and the cat will just keep moving basically as fast as it can go. So that doesn't seem very fair, that you just have to hold the spacebar down. Instead, I want to make it really pound the keyboard. So let's look at a different way to do this. Instead, we're going to do a repeat loop like we did for the dog, repeat until touching the red line. And inside the repeat, we're going to check for whether the spacebar is up or down. So let's see how to do this. Uh, we need first to start on a green flag. We need the repeat until, like we used for the dog. And we're going to repeat until we are touching the red finish line. So I click on the color square and then wait till that's red and click again. If I did a move in here, it would just move like the dog. That's the same code the dog has, right? Repeat until touching color, move 10 steps. Instead, I want to wait until I am pressing the spacebar. And actually the block here under sensing that knows whether the keys are pressed or not. So I can use that inside of wait until. So let's go to the control and I'll use a wait until pressing space. Once I press the space, I want to move the 10 steps. I'm going to take steal that from that other chunk of code that we don't want anymore. And in fact, I'm going to throw that away. Now if I use this code, I can still hold down the space bar. I can hit the green flag and I can, oops, I gotta move him back here. Just, I can hold it down and it, and it, it keeps moving forward. So we don't wanna allow the person to move again until this, the space bar is not pressed. So I need another wait until, and I'm gonna use that key space pressed again. But I'm going to do one more thing. Under operators, along with all the math stuff and the random number, there's some statements that change how to interpret these kind of sensing blocks. So I can do the opposite, not. So instead of waiting until it's pressed, I can wait till it's not pressed. In other words, it's up. And I'm going to use that inside the wait until. So the logic here is wait until the space bar is pressed, move 10 steps, and then wait until it's not pressed. In other words, the person has released the space bar and it's up. So if I run this again, if I hold it down, nothing happens. I have to pound it like I wanted. So that's good. One more important part we forgot is that with the dog, we positioned the dog at the starting line. We want to do the same thing for the cat. So I'm going to move the cat and kind of see where it should be roughly. And uh, we can use these numbers here to position it. So under motion, I'm going to go to, and this actually has the numbers of where it currently is already inside it. I'm going to move it up a little bit, I guess. And if I hit start now, they both start at the beginning. But of course, the dog goes running off really fast. So this is another problem. Right now, the per it's, a hard th it's hard for the person player to get ready to start pounding the keyboard and hit the green flag at the same time. So it's a little unfair. We need some way to start off the 
a game, maybe with someone saying ready, set, go, and then have both players being able to start at exactly the same time. So let's see how to do that. The first thing I want to do is, is add the ready, set, go part. I'm going to have the dog do that. So I click on the dog sprite and under looks, there's the say hello for two seconds. After I position it at the beginning line and before I start moving, I'm going to say ready for one second and then say set for one second and go for one second. Now in some ways we're now in a worse place than we were before. If I hit the flag while the dog's talking I can I can start moving although the dog's pretty fast so maybe that's fair but I want to prevent myself from moving until we're done saying ready, set, go. This is where we can start using that broadcast and receive stuff again. So let's see how to use that. Basically, after saying ready, set, go, I'm going to have the dog broadcast the message that the players are allowed to go. So under events, I'm going to broadcast a message and I'm going to call this message start or something like that. under the cat, I no longer want to start moving based on the green flag. I want to start moving based on receiving the message start. So now all the green flag does is position the cat at the beginning of the race and then it will sit there and not touch this waiting for key press kind of stuff until it receives the start message from the dog. And the dog only does that after saying ready, set, go. So basically, as soon as it broadcasts that, it will start to move, and the cat is free to move as well. While I'm here, I'm going to change this to three steps at a time. That will make it go slower. Each time through the loop, it will only move three dots instead of ten. So not quite as fast as it was before. Of course, I'm also free to add in the costume stuff on both the cat and the dog, so let's do that just for fun while we're thinking about it. Next costume. And so we get a little more of a running action. Okay, let's see how this goes. So hit the green flag, they both position, ready, set, go. And I need to race. I'm still a little bit slow, but I eventually get there. Now finally we actually get to the keeping score part, which is why we're making this whole race in the first place, except for the fact it's also kind of fun. So we want the computer to remember who won how many races. And I can do this a couple ways. I'm going to have a score, and every time the human wins, I want to add one to score. And every time the dog wins, I'm going to subtract one. So if, you're, if your score is a positive number, you know you've won more than the dog. And if it goes negative, then you know the dog is one more than you. Under data, there are some buttons to press. Make a variable, make a list. The variable is the thing that helps the computer remember information. A list is as well, but a list is multiple things. So I'm going to click make a variable. A variable has two parts. It has a name, so I'm going to call this score. And you're allowed to make it so that the variable can be used by all the sprites in your project or just the one. A lot of times, all the sprites is a good choice. And in this case, we want both the dog and the cat to be able to change it. So we're going to do it for all sprites. I click OK. So a variable has a name and a value. So for example, this block sets the variable name score to the value 0. Up here, I can see what my variables I have are. It's name score, and here in this box it shows what the value currently is. I can get rid of that if I want by unchecking this checkmark bar. Let's check out this checkbox here. 
But it's really nice to just have a nice, easy way of showing the score on the screen. I can set, I can set the variable to different values. So here I say set score to 5, and when I click on it, it actually changes the value here to 5. If I wanted, if I wanted to use the variable in place of a number, number somewhere, I can drag, I can drag it and drop it on top, top of some other number somewhere. somewhere. I don't, really I don't really want to use places, 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 places and showing the place, 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 place of the number I can use score instead. instead. And when the computer, and when computer looks at that looks instruction, at instruction, it sees the sees variable, the variable name score, score, looks at the value, values it, and value 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 the value of the name. So, so we refer to the variable by the name, name, the computer uses the value as I decided. So what are some things we need to do here? Well, one thing is the game game. Uh, ends, ends, in other words, so when I've, I've crossed, crossed the finish, the finish line, line, which happens, which happens after, after I'm touching the color red, and any instructions, instructions down here happen, happen after, after I touch the finish line. So I can change the score by 1 when the cat crosses the finish line. Let's see if this works. Oh, I can't race that dog. <laughs> I'm way too slow. So it went from 5 to 6 as soon as I crossed the finish line. We already see one problem here. The dog actually won the race, but I just kept going and uh, tried to win, so that wasn't quite fair. Let's ch do the dog here. And when the dog finishes touching the finish line, I want to change the score by negative one, make the score go down by one. Now there's one more thing I need to do. Notice just because the dog finishes doesn't mean I've stopped. I can still continue racing. I need a way of stopping the, diff the other sprites once one of us finishes, uh, hits the finish line. We've already used this a little bit. Under control, there's that stop all. That stops all scripts for all the sprites. So as soon as the dog crosses the finish line, the script for the cat will stop. I need to do the same thing on the cat to a stop all. So the first one to the finish line will force the other scripts to stop going. Okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, right now the score is six. I'm gonna set that back. I'm gonna click on this, set score to zero, and make that go back to zero since we haven't really been playing fair yet. So I hit the green flag, ready, set, go. And I know I'm going to lose again. Oh. All right, the score went to minus one. And more importantly, I can no longer move the cat. So as soon as one of us touches the finish line, both uh, sprites stop their action. I can play again, Let's see if I can beat the score. Uh, I'm getting a little faster, but still not so good. So these are the basics of a pretty complicated game. We're going to have you add to it by, one, making the dog go at different speeds using random, and eventually adding a second human player so you can race against each other. Have fun with this game, and see what else you can do to add some cool stuff to it.